Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be taking a look at some awesome new improvements to CMU Emulator. Some of these come in the form of emulator updates themselves, while others come in the form of graphics driver updates, specifically those of NVIDIA GPU users. Now, if you've been using CMU and especially CMU's Vulkan API backend for the past few months, you are likely aware of their asynchronous shader compilation and decompilation setting, which basically allows for practically stutter-free gameplay when using the Vulkan API and the setting itself. Now, unfortunately, if you wanted to use this async compiler setting, you were forced to use NVIDIA's Vulkan beta driver, which was a bit of a pain in the ass for some users. However, worry no more, in NVIDIA's latest stable game-ready driver, they have implemented all of the features required for asynchronous shader decompilation and compilation, meaning you no longer need to use the Vulkan beta drivers. Another awesome change that isn't really related to CMU but is related to Yuzu, for anybody who is experiencing performance drops in games like Breath of the Wild, Super Smash Bros Ultimate, Super Mario Odyssey and Animal Crossing New Horizon, the Yuzu team have also fixed their issues with latest NVIDIA drivers, meaning that you are completely 100% safe to upgrade to your latest NVIDIA driver to get the best possible performance out of some of the latest game releases and also the best performance out of your emulators. Since this async decompilation and compilation setting is now supported on all stable drivers for NVIDIA, AMD and to a degree Intel GPUs, you can expect my new and complete CMU setup guide for the best possible performance in the coming days. Now, the reason I am so excited about this async setting now being supported is not only because of the driver support which comes on the stable drivers, but also because the CMU team have just implemented a huge upgrade to it that greatly improves its speed, performance and general stability when using the feature. This and many more Vulkan or OpenGL changes come in this new 121.2 version and that's what we're going to be taking a look at right now. First and foremost, if you are a CMU Patreon supporter, you already have access to these changes, so simply head on over to CMU's Patreon page or check your email for a link to the new build. If you aren't a patron, it's going to be releasing on this coming Friday, the 25th of September, and as I said earlier, I'm going to be releasing my new and complete setup guide showing you how to use all of these new features in that very video. As always, remember to hit the little bell icon down below to get notified as soon as that guide goes live. Release dates aside, let's now take a look at all the things changing in this new CMU 121.2 version. First up, on their CPU JIT, they have now added support for the instructions STHUX and RLWIMI. This change provides minor performance boosts for any games that utilize these instructions. One example we've been given is Sonic Boom. Next up, for Vulkan and OpenGL, they have added full support for integer texture samplers. The only game of note that uses these, we've been told, is Project Zero Maiden of the Black Water. And while these texture samplers are now fully supported, of note, there is no obvious visual difference in this game. Okay, so next up, we move on to the good stuff coming in 121.2. This is the awesome async compilation stuff I was talking about earlier. CMU Emulator now supports the compilation of shader modules with the use of multiple cores or threads. This gives a huge speed boost to the already fast asynchronous shader compilation process and to make things even better, on top of this, any shaders that still need to compile in sync are now also going to compile much faster due to vertex and pixel shaders for draw calls now being able to compile in parallel. What this means for you the user is that for any games where you're not playing with a shader cache, for example, for all gameplay footage I've shown thus far in Breath of the Wild, you are going to have practically no stutter at all when playing any of these games for the first time. This may not seem important due to the existence of shader caches, however, we need to remember that if you're using Vulkan on AMD, Nvidia or Intel GPUs, Every time you upgrade CMU versions, or indeed any time you upgrade your graphics driver, your Vulkan pipeline cache is going to be reset and require itself to be rebuilt. 
thanks to this new multi-threaded asynchronous compilation and decompilation upgrade, this process is going to be an absolute dream, even so in comparison to the already previously fast async update we got in the last few versions, and especially so it's going to be a dream compared to what we've had in CMU pretty much forever with its OpenGL, GLSL shader decompilation and compilation speeds. In just a moment, I'm going to do an exact direct comparison between all of these different compilers, but first we have three small changes that are also coming additionally in this 121.2 version. The first of these changes is that they've fixed a rare race condition where asynchronous shader compilation could fail and lead to permanent graphics bugs on your current play session. The second change is the adding of a barrier before frame output which should resolve black pixel artifacts on some GPUs where this occurred. And the final fix coming in this latest CMU version is a fix to a bug that could cause a device loss error during swap chain creation in gameplay. Okay, as I said we're gonna just do a quick little comparison between GLSL and Vulkan's single and multi-threaded async shader compilation. At the beginning of our benchmark, notice how much faster multi-threaded async is at loading the game's shaders in. Having tested this for now about 5 to 8 hours, there is a noticeable difference in in-game pop-in when using multi-threaded versus using the previous single-threaded version. Please note that for all of these benchmarks, be it on a GLSL, async single-threaded or async multi-threaded, Absolutely no shader cache was in use, no shader or pipeline cache was created. This is just how fast the new async multi-threading is. Something I've also noticed in testing is that multi-threaded async seems to be a small bit faster on a moment to moment basis, though this is really really hard to test for since the difference is usually 3 or 4 frames per second and the frame rates we're usually at are well above 80 or 90 frames per second at this 1440p resolution. By far the most notable difference in relation to in-game stutter happens on the larger effects in-game, for example using any ruins in gameplay, the guardian bomb attacks or firing any explosive arrows. This speeding up of shader compilation is likely due to this multi-threading and also the parallelization of pixel shaders and vertex shaders in this 121.2 version. Regardless, it's pretty damn impressive to see just how far CMU's Vulkan API implementation has come in the last few months. As I pointed out in my previous video covering CMU, Vulkan is now, even on Nvidia hardware, offering much better performance and stability in some of the more demanding games like Breath of the Wild. As I said earlier, my new setup guide for CMU should go live in the next 2-3 to three days, so make sure to keep your eyes peeled on the channel for that one. I know a lot of you guys don't like it when I only use Breath of the Wild gameplay footage for videos, but it's honestly been about 5 or 6 months since I just sat down and played this game, so that's the reason all of the gameplay footage for this video has been of this game. If you already have access to this multi-threaded async update, do let me know down in the comment section what you think of it, and please, please make sure to update your Nvidia driver if you haven't done so to its latest version. This async feature isn't going to work on any other of NVIDIA's stable release drivers, so as I said, please, please make sure you upgrade to it and test out this feature as soon as you possibly can. It is, in my opinion, a literal game changer for this emulator. So that's going to be it for this video, guys. Once again, thank you all very much for checking it out. I greatly appreciate your support. To all of my supporters over on Patreon, I want to give another massive, massive thank you to each and every one of you guys, especially so to Shadow Marth, the creator of the Relics of the Past mod, which I've been showcasing throughout this video. Expect a more in-depth look at it in the very near future. Again, thank you everyone for watching. As always, remember to like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.